The chances of another interest rate rise in the next month or two just got a lot higher. In fact, the likelihood, according to the markets, more than doubled thanks to today's inflation figures. Just a few months ago, we were all looking forward to interest rates finally starting to head down before the end of the year. But we're now looking at yet another rise, perhaps as soon as next month, and a 50-50 bet by September. Another rate increase will be yet another blow to households, another addition to the cost of living crisis. Yeah, the annual inflation rate jumped up almost half a percent in today's CPI figures, taking it to 4%, a level that markets assessed as worrying, given the Reserve Bank has already been considering increasing interest rates to force inflation down. The inflation trend in this country is now back up, not down. I just can't see how they can walk away from this uh, and have any sort of inflation fighting credibility intact. So I think it's about a 75% chance, uh, up from about a 60% chance prior to this number. Um, The market puts a slightly lower probability on it, but interestingly, you're seeing a lot of forecasters uh, changing their view to a rate hike in August in the last few hours. Look, this stuff is dynamite for the Albanese Labor government and its economic and political management. As I said before, as we've said many times, the monthly numbers bounce around. They don't compare the same goods and services. This is a government trying to clear the decks for an election late this year or early next, but it's in deep strife because we all remember Labor's central campaign promise at the last election. We will put in place mechanisms that provide cost of living relief. Under Labor, you'll have a government which cares about cost of living and has plans to deal with it. I'll build people's living standards up. A better future with real plans to address the cost of living. And to ease the pressure that too many Australians are feeling during this full-blown cost of living crisis. Taking pressure off the cost of living. Of addressing cost of living issues. To take pressure off living standards. Meaningful help with your cost of living. Yeah, analysis of the CPI figures shows that many of the areas driving inflation are parts of the economy where the hand of government is strongest. There's fuel prices and tobacco where government taxes are high and there's rents where the housing crisis kicks in and there's electricity prices where the rush to renewables is forcing prices ever upwards. The fact is that inflation is lower than what we inherited. The fact is that the measures that we have put in place that have put downward pressure on inflation, such as energy price relief, have had a substantial impact on helping to drive down that inflation. Now, on the contrary, experts tell us that spending from state and federal governments has been fuelling inflation, and the worry is that new spending kicking in from next week, fuel rebates and and the likes, could also be inflationary. Still, the Prime Minister found ways to downplay the problem, or at least pass the buck. This is what the RBA governor had to say. She said this is a very similar experience. She went on to say, If you look at core inflation and services inflation in particular overseas, the experience there is very similar to here. Yeah, it's global factors, apparently, which, of course, is another way of saying this. Somehow I don't think that line is going to work in an election campaign. When you promise to beat inflation, you promise to force down interest rates and promise to lower the cost of living, it's best not to make things worse.